Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're going to take a look at section 12-5, Angle Relationships in Circles. Our objectives are to find the measures of angles formed by lines that intersect circles. We're also going to be finding the measure of arcs, and we're going to use the angle measures to solve other problems. Our vocabulary includes tangent secant and tangent chord, and we're trying to use circle relationships, properties of circles, and the lines that intersect circles to model a few real-world situations. Let's take a look at our warm-up questions, and we're going to start out with the question number one, which is asking us to find each line or segment that intersects the circle with center F. We know that we can have chords secants, tangents, we could have radii and diameters also. In this particular case, we don't have any diameters. CD, segment CD looks like it might be. We definitely don't have any radii. Uh, CD looks like it might be, but it's a little bit off center, so we're going to say it's not. In terms of chords, there are two that we can list, segment AE and segment CD. Now, AE is going to do double duty because it's also a secant if we write it as line AE. In terms of tangents, we only have one, and that's this one over here, and that's a ray. So we haven't seen one of those for a while. Ray AB, remember that symbol. We'll move on to question number two, and in question number two, we are trying to find the measure of angle NMP, NMP, which is right here, and we remember that it is related, because it's a central angle, to the measure of the intercepted arc. So we're going to write that up as the measure of angle NMP is equal to 110 degrees, and yes, it was as simple as that. We'll take a look now at question number three, which uses the same diagram. This time we want to find the measure of angle NLP, which is not a central angle. It is an inscribed angle, and that one has a different relationship. So the measure of angle NLP is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. In this case, we can either call it PN or NP for that intercepted arc. So it's going to be one half of 110 degrees, and so the measure of angle NLP is 55 degrees. That brings us to our next theorem, 12-5-1, which says if a tangent and a secant or chord intersect on a circle at the point of tangency, then the measure of the angle formed is half the measure of the intercepted arc. And that is saying that the measure of this angle is going to be half the measure of this intercepted arc. And this happens with tangents only. On example one, we are going to try to find the measure of angle EFH, EFH. And this can be found, we know that this is a tangent chord situation. And what we want to be able to do is use the intercepted arc. And so we're going to say that the measure of angle EFH is actually going to be one half of the measure of the intercepted arc FH, which is this one right here. And that's what we learned in our theorem. So we're going to show substitution. And that means that the measure of angle EFH is 65 degrees. Now, in part B, we are trying to find the measure of angle, or I'm sorry, the measure of arc GF. And the measure of arc GF is right here, GF. And we don't have the angle that we need, which would be this one. 
for us to be able to use the formula. However, we do have the supplementary angle to the one that we need. So we're going to find that by subtracting from 180 degrees. So we know that our angle is measuring 58 degrees. Now we can use the formula. We know that the measure of arc GF is going to be twice the measure of angle FGJ. And I called it FGJ, but we didn't actually have a point J. I've inserted one now for the purpose of making it a little bit simpler. So 2 times 58, which gives us 116 degrees for the measure of arc GF. This brings us to theorem 12-5-2, which says, if two secants or chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arcs. And that is saying, you can see angle 1, and this angle is going to measure the same as angle 1. Those are vertical angles, so we know that they're going to have the same congruent measurement. And this is what we're talking about. So what we are able to do is find the measure of angle 1 by finding half the sum of the measures of arcs AB and CD. So that's what we're going to use for the example number 2, finding angle measures inside a circle. We see that we have that exact situation where we have the vertical angles. So we know that this angle is going to be congruent to this one and this angle is going to be congruent to this one. So the one that we're interested in right now is the measure of angle AEB. So that's the measure of angle AEB. We can see that we have that intercepted arc. And on the bottom part of the circle, we have the other intercepted arc. So we basically have those two. That's what we're going to be using. So the measure of angle AEB is going to be equal to one half the sum of the measures of arc AB and arc DC. Okay, we've shown the formula. Now we're going to show the substitution. 139 degrees plus 113 degrees. And that's going to give us a measure of angle AEF of 126 degrees. Take us to our next theorem, which says 12-5-3, if a tangent and a secant in red or two tangents in blue or two secants in green intersect in the exterior of a circle. Now notice where our vertex is on each one of these, the vertex of the angle created. So if we have this exterior vertex of an angle, then our formula changes and what we're going to have is the measure of the angle is going to be one half the difference between the intercepted arcs. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like on example number three. We want to find the measure of angle X, and you can see it's this very small angle way over here. Point E or vertex E is outside the circle. That's where angle X starts from, and you can see that we have the intercepted arc CG and the intercepted arc DF. So we're going to write this up as the measure of angle X is equal to, following the formula, 1 half, and it's going to be the difference between the large arc minus the small arc. So the measure of arc CG minus the measure of arc DF. We've shown the formula, now we're going to do the substitution. So 87 degrees minus 7 degrees, so that's one half, of course, whoops, of 80 degrees. So the measure of angle X is 40 degrees. Example B, we can see that there's an angle that starts the vertex at point C. And we're, again, trying to find the measure of this angle. 
And so what we're going to do is find the intercepted arcs. We can see the intercepted arcs are, and here's the big one, here's the smaller one. And so we're going to use the formula, the measure of angle, again, it's angle x, measure of angle x is equal to 1 half the measure of the large one AD minus the measure of the small arc BD. So we'll substitute in 200 degrees minus 74 degrees and that means the measure of angle X is 63 degrees. Okay, we've got another example. Now this one is associated with a real world application. We see that we have a company logo and what we're trying to do in this case is find the measure of arc F, oh, I'm sorry, the measure of angle FKH, which is FKH is right there. We are given the information that the measure of arc FH is 108 degrees and the measure of arc LJ is 12 degrees. So, of course, this is pretty straightforward, and we're going to set it up. Measure of angle FKH is one half of the difference between measure of arc FH and measure of arc LJ. So the measure of angle FKH is going to be 48 degrees. All right, on the now you try, we're actually going to do this one together. So it says, when a person is farsighted, light rays enter the eye and are focused behind the retina. In the eye shown, light rays converge at R. We can see point R on the exterior of the circle. So this is going to be where we use that one half formula. And this says that the measure of arc PS, which is this one right here, measures 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees. And the measure of arc QT, which is over here, measures 14 degrees. And what we want to do is find the measure of PRS, which is this angle right here. Okay, so we will set it up. Measure of angle PRS is equal to, and again, one half of the difference between the measure of arc PS and the measure of arc QT. So we substitute in. And we end up with the measure of angle PRS is equal to 23. Again, that's that angle all the way on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay, this is a summary of all of those different theorems we just saw. So when we have got the vertex directly on the circle, then we know that the measure of the angle is going to be one half of the measure of the intercepted arc. When we have that intersection point between the two chords or secants, which could be diameters, by the way, don't forget, then when it's inside the circle, the measure of the angle is going to be half the sum of the measures of the sum of the intercepted arc. So again, we're adding them together, and then we are dividing by two. When we have that vertex point outside or exterior to the circle, we're finding the difference, and then again, dividing by two, multiplying by one half. That means the same thing. So let's take a look at example number five. In this case, what we want to do is we want to find the measure of an arc yz, which is right here. We know that arc yz has a relationship with arc, <clears throat> well, I don't know what to call this one exactly, but that little arc. And uh, I think what we might do is give this point a name. We'll call it point T in order for us to be able to use notation associated with it. Now we know 
that the measure of angle x, or v, I guess we should call it, v, no, y, x, t, or y, x, v, or y, x, z, for that matter, y, x, v, or I'll call it z, is going to be equal to one half the measures of the difference between the arcs. So measure of arc y, z minus the measure of arc t, y. Now, we want this one, don't have it. We don't have this one, and we don't, well, we do have the measure of y, x, z, and that is 49 degrees. So let's see what we can do with that. We can, of course, substitute in the 49 degrees right here, but we're still missing the one that we're trying to find and that ty that we were just talking about. Now, just to make it a little bit simpler when the time comes, we know we can multiply both sides by 2, and 2 times 49 is going to give us 98, and so that'll be just the difference. Okay, we're going to have to take a little bit of a detour now to find some of these other things. And so let's take a look at what we see in the circle. We know that we have some vertical angles inside the circle. So this is going to measure 113 degrees, just like the vertical angle to it. And we know that the supplement, we can write in also, the supplement to the 113 degree is going to be 180 minus, and 180 minus 113 degrees gives us 67 degrees. So that means this is 67 degrees, and this is 67 degrees. We've got a little bit more information to work with now, and we can say the measure of angle XV, let's see, XVY, x, v, y, which is this one right here, that is equal to one half the measure of w, z, arc w, z, and arc t, y. Okay, perfect. This is really going to be helpful because we can substitute in the 67 degrees here that we just found that's times one half. The measure of arc WZ, of course, was given to us in the question. And now we just need to find the measure of arc TY. So again, we're going to multiply both sides by 2. When we multiply 67 by 2, that's going to give us a hundred and little correction to make here. That is 134, and that's equal to 68 degrees plus the measure of arc T Y. So 134 degrees minus 68 degrees gives us 66 degrees, and that's the measure of arc T Y. Now we can use that to substitute into what we originally had up here, and 98 is equal to the measure of arc Y Z minus the measure of arc ty, which we just found. So we know that the measure of arc yz is going to be 98 plus 66, which gives us 164 degrees. So what we were trying to find, the measure of arc yz is equal to 164 degrees. That one was a little bit more complicated than most. That is it for this lesson. See you back for the next lesson.